Welcome back to Make Do. I'm David. And I'm James. So we're finally getting around to customizing our GameCube controllers. We've had them for a few years, and it's time. I guess after 20 years, they might need a fresh coat of paint. And some cleaning. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> As always, we'll have a list of all the supplies we're using for this project in the description below. Because they couldn't make this easy, you will need a special screwdriver to get the shells apart. All right, let's take this thing apart. So there are six screws on the back. You'll need a Y-shaped screwdriver to take these out. We're using this really nice iFixit kit. We'll have the link in the description below, but you can easily go with something cheaper. Once the screws are out, you can take the shell apart. Be careful taking it apart. Uh, you don't want to knock things out of place. Uh, there is a rumble pack in here that is loose, so make sure to hold that whenever you're handling the inside. We do not want to have to resolder anything. Then you want to pull the membranes and buttons out, and you can put them aside until later. Be sure to keep the membranes. Most button replacement kits do not come with those. There is a tiny membrane behind the start button. Make sure you grab that as well. Next, take off the C-stick and analog stick. This does take more force than you would think, just be careful. You can wiggle it back and forth until it comes off. To take the triggers out, you'll first have to remove this back plate. These plates are held in place by Phillips head screws, so make sure you switch out your driver. So it's only these 10 screws that are holding the controller together. Pull these out and leave them assembled for now, we'll deal with that later. Since we're doing both of our controllers, we're going to repeat this process. Next up, we gotta wash these things, cause, uh, yeah, they're pretty gross. All you need is some hot water and some dish soap. But not too hot. Yeah, I just sort of want to wash everything off that maybe has accumulated since I was 11 years old. This will also make sure that it's nice and clean before we go into the painting stage. and repeat. And if you didn't want to paint this, you could just go back to reassembling. It's still kind of nice to get your controllers nice and clean every once in a while.
Now that 20 years of snacking has been rinsed off, it's time to get them ready for paint. The final step before painting is to hit everything with a Scotch-Brite pad. This final buffing removes the protective coating on the plastic and any grease or grime that might have been left over from the washing. It's important that you don't skip this step. You want to make sure you have a nice surface for the primer to bond to so your finish comes out super nice. Most products are just spent waiting. You missed a spot. What? No, I didn't. F now that everything's ready for paint, we're gonna hit it with a coat of our favorite primer. Now you know I love the color of primer, but we should probably make them a little more interesting. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, I have an idea. I hope it's gray. I'm not playing Smash with Joy-Cons. No, I was thinking we could make them match our Animal Crossing Joy-Cons. I found some Montana Gold spray paint that's pretty close. Awesome, let's do it. Wow, I really like how this finish came out. Yeah, the colors are great. And we'll finish everything off with a coat of satin varnish. So the Joy-Cons have black buttons, but... Yeah, these aren't gonna work. Much better. All right, let's get this thing back together. Something we didn't do was make sure that our paint was very, very dry before we reassembled. So make sure you do that, but more on that later. So we're gonna start with the triggers. So if you're swapping the triggers, you're gonna need to pull this part off of the old trigger. The metal bar snaps into a little divot there. And we're good to go. These take a little maneuvering to get into place. Once you get it in there, just make sure it works properly. Now we're gonna screw these plates back on. All right, now we can add the analog and C-stick. It has a key to make sure that it's registered correctly. The buttons only fit in their respective spots, so you can't really mess that up. Thank you, Nintendo. Then put the membranes back in. There are little pegs on the inside that show where it should line up. change the Z button, you're going to need to take this spring out of the old one. You can do this with a set of pliers, just pull directly up.
As you put the board in, you're going to want to put this wire right around the peg here. It's a nice little design feature that keeps the stress off the connection point. Thanks Nintendo, again. Then we're just going to get these screws back in there. And we're good to go. Alright, so we're going to do all this again. Oh, I see. You practice on mine. So get the trigger set in there. Add the C stick and the analog stick. Add the buttons. Add the membranes. Get the Z button in there. Put the board back in. And then close it up. So they look great, but we do have a confession to make. We kind of messed the paint up. We didn't listen to our own advice and we didn't let the paint dry. We ended up marking up the paint job as we were assembling it. So we came back in, we sanded everything back down, repainted it, let it dry for over 24 hours, and then we put it back together. Yeah, we didn't use these for a good two or three weeks after we painted them. Just be patient and let things dry. Also, a minor design change you'll see is that we ended up going back to the purple Z buttons. The ones from the kits that we bought just didn't fit right. You could sand these down, but it'd be a lot of effort. And actually, it looks kind of cool. Anyway, this project came out really nice, and I'm super happy with the results. It's a great way to refresh a control you might have lying around. And if you don't have one, you could pick one up from your local game store. And you can really customize this any way you want. There are a ton of people making custom buttons online. There's actually a lot of really cool ones on Etsy that people are doing resin casts with glitter, insets, all kinds of crazy stuff. There are also some metal ones on there. We actually ended up making a third controller, which if you head on over to our Instagram or Facebook accounts, you can check that out. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay up to date on all of our future projects. And if you do end up making your own, be sure to tag us because we'd love to see them. Thanks for watching. And see you in the next one. What if we painted like an entire GameCube? We are not painting my GameCube. I'm sure it's just as simple as a controller. I We are not painting my GameCube. What if I already started? Where is it?